Raspberry Pi GPIO introduction. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect a LED to your Raspberry Pi and how to get it to blink using Python. So what you're going to need to complete this video or to follow through with this tutorial is you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Here I've got a Model B Plus Raspberry Pi version 1. Inside of this case here is that same type of Pi but I just wanted to show you what the GPIO header is and what it is is this series of pins here there is a total of 40 and the way that you read these pins is starting at this corner here one two three four five six so on and so forth what you can get if you want to connect your raspberry pi to a breadboard like this one here is a pi cobbler and this pi cobbler here is a t pi cobbler that allows you to plug into the breadboard and labels each of the pins so that you know what each one of them is i recommend using one of these if you're going to be doing a lot of work on a breadboard what else you're going to need is a resistor i have a 220 ohm resistor here a led and two wires that you will connect to your breadboard here now, just in case you are unfamiliar with how a breadboard works, the way a breadboard works is you have two rails. As you can see, I'm going to be wiring on this side of the, of the breadboard. You have your positive rail and your negative rail, and they're all interconnected down the length of the rail, but not to each other. As well, each one of these rows here of five in length are interconnected to each other, but they are electrically isolated this way, allowing you to complete your circuit. First, take your LED and let's plug that in. And I'm going to connect the positive end of the LED to pin 22 I'm then going to take my resistor and connect it to ground So that is GPIO 22 connected to the long prong of the LED, which is then connected to the wrist resistor and then back to ground. On your Raspberry Pi, let's open up a new window in idle 3, and I'm going to save this file as LED blink. So that's LED blink dot pi. To be able to access the GPIO of our uh, Raspberry Pi, we're going to have to import a module, and that module is going to be rpi.gpio as gpio. What we're going to be doing is blinking our LED, so to be able to blink our LED, we're going to have to be able to set a certain amount of time, so from time, you're going to want to import sleep. We're going to initialize our board, and the way that you do that is gpio.setMode and then you can choose how you want to configure the setup of your board uh, in terms of notation. I mentioned that you normally would count it one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, but the issue with that is it can get confusing because I'm saying that I'm connected to pin 22 here. If we want to go with how the board is laid out, we would say gpio.board, but because we are going to use the notation as it shows on the cobbler here, I'm going to use .bcm. We, got, we want to blink for a certain number of times, and that number of times is three times. We're going to have a counter that keeps track of how many times we've blunked so far. Blunked. And then we're going to specify which pin our LED is connected to, and that is pin 22. Finally, we're going to have to specify... Um, we're, we're going to want to set up what that GPIO pin, pin 22 is. So we're going to set up the pin the LED is connected to and we do that by typing in setup dots uh, GPIO dot setup it's going to be LED pin and it is going to be a output now we can say while our count is less than our blink count do this and what are we going to do we're going to tell our GPIO output for the LED pin to go to true. 
that is to start delivering juice through it. And we're going to print just as a dummy statement, LED on. And then we are going to sleep. Let's sleep for three seconds here. So we're going to leave it running for three seconds. And then we're going to set our output. You can probably guess because we want to turn it off. We're going to set our LED pin to false. And then we want to print just as a dummy statement, LED off. And then we can sleep for one second while it is off. And then we are going to advance our counter by one. Once it finishes reaching our count being equal to three, it will break the program. So let's give this a save. Now, if we try to run this right now in idle three, we're going to get an error. Let me demonstrate that. And the reason why we get this error is because we have no access to dev slash men try running as root. Um, Idle 3 can't on its own just access the GPIO and start flipping what pins are doing what. Um, we have to be in super user mode to be able to do that, or we have to bypass this security feature somehow. The reason we have that security feature is so that you don't accidentally cause something that could cause the Pi to self-destruct, start a fire, or hurt somebody. So the way we get around doing that, um, get around this security feature is by, in your terminal, uh, executing the command using sudo. So let's navigate to where we are storing our LED blink file. And again, if I type in Python 3 LED blink, we're going to get that error. See? So what we can do this time is type in sudo Python 3 LED blink dot pi, and it should work. And there we have it. Our LED is lighting up, held for three seconds, off for one second, LED on, LED off, LED on. LED off. Isn't that cool, right? So we've got ourselves a blinking LED. Now, the problem with the program that we've written so far is what happens if we were to break or run the program again even? So I'm going to run it again. You're going to see an error code pop up and we see it's still running okay, but let's say I break the code. So here we have our keyboard interrupt and our LED is still on. This is obviously a problem. If, let's say, that instead of flipping an LED, we were flipping a relay, and that relay is controlling a pump, and for some reason our program crashed, or we keyboard interrupted it while it was running, uh, we're going to have a problem where we're going to be leaving things running, and that's an obvious safety problem. So the way that you go around, uh, get around this issue where you might have a break is going back to your idle here. We're going to put a try in front of our while loop, and we're going to have to indent everything again. Ooh. So we're going to try doing this, and when we are done doing this, we're going to finally uh, reset the GPIO pins to a safe state. And the way you do that is GPIO.cleanup. So what's going to happen now is we're going to try doing this, which we know works just fine. And then if we were to get some sort of exception, be it a code failure for some reason or a keyboard interrupt, what we're going to do is perform a cleanup. And that will reset all the pins back to a neutral state. So instead of having it low or high or whatever, we reset them all to a neutral state. So let's give that a save. I'm going back to our terminal here. Let's sudo python3 ledblink.py. We give that a Okay, so we have the error code again because we didn't reset it last time. So it's just going to go through its shtick here. And let's run it one more time. There we go. See how the error code is gone? We have it blinking. Everything's working. And I'm going to interrupt it on the third blink here. Interrupt. See, I interrupted it and immediately it killed it. And if I run it again... we see that it runs just fine. 
So that was a fun introduction on getting a LED to light up using a Raspberry Pi. In the next video, a uh, continuation of the introduction, I'm going to show you how you can get a button to trigger an event on the Raspberry Pi. See you then.